Hello traders, this is John Kicklider, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com. For this weekend strategy video, my focus is going to be on a currency that hasn't got a lot of focus, uh, at least from me, over the past weeks, and that is not the EURUSD, the currency pair, and certainly not the dollar, but rather the euro. I haven't really covered the euro, and I think for good reason. When you look at its broader structure, it is, uh, especially against the dollar, uh, in a consolidation pattern that is the better part of two years. Uh, this doesn't provide a lot of uh, tempting trading opportunity unless we're talking about range trade, which in the market conditions certainly is attractive, but most people's attention usually strays towards the breakouts and the trends. Now, we have covered the ECB a number of times and its lack of impact on monetary or and exchange rates in capital markets, which was a remarkable influence uh, back in December of this past year as well as March of this last year. But I want to return to the euro as we are heading back into uh, what I think is the coming week's uh, top event risk. And that's saying a lot, considering that uh, I'm referring to, obviously, the ECB rate decision. But it competes with, with items like the uh, Chinese GDP figure for Wednesday. All right, that is a very noteworthy piece of event risk. We also have themes like Brexit, which is going to have a steady drip feed of influence, and risk trends, which are hanging over our heads constantly. But I do think that uh, the ECB rate decision is at the very top of the list of themes and uh, possible catalysts that can move this market. Now, why is this so important? The rate decision is unlikely to end in any kind of change. However, we are likely to see a repeat of an event that happened in the uh, semi-distant future, approximately three years ago. Uh, and that was the Fed uh, and uh, their announcement that they were going to start to, uh, or eventually, back off of their bond purchases uh, during the QE3 program. If you recall back then, it was an open-ended and at that point uh, relatively vague on its uh, termination, uh, but they were full in on QE3, making monthly purchases of very large amounts of U.S. debt. And uh, people were watching that very closely. That was uh, one of those uh, spurs, one of those sparks that was uh, feeding the market's performance. And that's why I very often refer back to this chart. The rate of change in uh, monetary policy uh, or the balance sheet versus the S&P 500. Uh, more notably, I think people prefer this chart, uh, but this is actually the Fed's balance sheet versus the S&P 500. You can see that it has a profound influence uh, in terms of building up the balance sheet, but also the expectation of change had a profound impact on the market. And let's actually take a look back at uh, what had happened uh, back in 2013. So I will turn it over to two assets that ha that were actually directly influenced by this event. Uh, I'll, uh, well, I'm using, it, I'm referencing the treasuries, uh, but I'm using the TLT uh, treasury ETF. That's a medium term treasury ETF. And I'm using the DXY as an overlay. All right, now I'll back out to the particular days in which we actually heard uh, Ben Bernanke, first in testimony before Congress and then in a uh, more open forum, uh, announcing that uh, tapering is likely to occur, and here's where it officially was announced. All right, so that was May, uh, late May, uh, in which it was suggested that as long as economic conditions continue to continue to improve, that uh, the Fed would consider uh, tapering or reducing the uh, size of the multi monthly purchases of their uh, bond uh, absorption. Uh, and then this was the June 19th announcement that it was actually going to happen. Now, let's remove the dollar here for a second. That had a pretty clear impact on government bonds, right? the price of government bonds. And subsequently, yields would rise on that announcement for the dollar. All right. We had a initial reticence to move with it, but then subsequently a rally when it was actually announced. Yields rose, dollar rose. All right. Now, this was well before a rate hike. 
we have to recall that the only rake hike that we uh, hike that we have uh, to this point is actually the one that we had in December of this past year. All right, we've not actually pursued uh, another rate hike uh, on the Fed side. That's what many people are waiting for. The December hike came uh, just around here. Okay, so this was not the instigation of rate hikes, but what it did show was a turning point where monetary policy was continuously building in terms of accommodation. All right, so going back to that chart that we referenced, monetary policy wouldn't continue to accelerate, but rather it peaked and started to uh, retrace. And that was a tipping point that eventually led to the dollar's remarkable rally well before we actually got to the point of liftoff. Now, given this precedence in the historical context for the U.S. dollar, for treasuries, uh, for other U.S. assets, and the value of U.S. Uh, markets versus their counterparts, uh, we've seen the implications for relative monetary policy and the uh, position that it puts the Fed in versus the ECB. What does this mean for the ECB if they start to discuss taper? All right, there are a few factors on hand here. One is that there really isn't an economic uh, pressing, uh, pressing need uh, for the ECB to pursue uh, a constant and unchecked uh, monetary policy that they are currently engaged in. Another factor is that they are running out of viable bonds. Right? There is a credit quality that they need to maintain. So either they reduce their credit quality and they have moved into other assets, which if you're not buying government debt, then obviously the credit quality is going to drop regardless. Uh, but they're not going to buy at the same pace. Um, and you're running out of viable government debt. There are, there's a, a, a degree of, uh, of dispute between when they will hit a, a wall, because there's not really a defined wall unless they actually get 100% 100 of the market. But uh, they will hit a wall either very late in this year or early in 2017. So a taper is almost inevitable. This program is actually scheduled to end sometime in March, but it can actually be extended out to September. So we are coming to some natural or stated ends uh, or limitations for this program, and now it starts to become a question of when do we prepare the market for this inevitable turn. We've already heard ECB President Draghi suggests that uh, tapering might be necessary going forward. Well, he said it was inevitably necessary, thinking further into the future, but he uh, certainly insinuated that it was coming sooner rather than later. Is this the opportunity for Draghi to officially announce uh, a timetable for the taper? And if that's the case, do we expect the euro to actually rally significantly? Recall what happened to the U.S. dollar. It did confer a dramatic benefit in a leading expectation of interest rate hikes. Now, I don't think that it's going to necessarily surpass the U.S. dollar in this position, or the, the ECB surpass the Fed in its hawkish uh, interpretations. But it will uh, draw a heavy contrast between the likes of the BOJ, who just continues to go uh, without limitation, now shifting it to a more sustainable uh, extreme accommodation, which is targeting a zero uh, yield on the 10-year JGB. And then the BOE, who is uh, now relatively new, all right, it has a new uh, effort to revive its QE program, where the ECB is starting to approach its limitation. That contrast can give the euro lift. And it comes at a very uh, remarkable time where the ECB's balance sheet is nearing its record high, at least in dollar terms, uh, that we had seen back at the end of 2012. And it could uh, eventually start to taper off and potentially uh, cap off before the Fed's uh, balance sheet, and certainly before the PBOC, and definitely before the BOJ, because the BOJ continues to rise with a significant momentum. Now, in terms of what the market expects, 
there isn't much of that tape review. Uh, I would say that the Euros uh, tumble. Let's uh, zoom in here and look at some more recent price action. The Euros tumble as of late certainly does not uh, front that expectation. Uh, this is more so because the Euro is stalled, the dollar is doing, uh, uh, doing well. Uh, but the markets through overnight, uh, overnight interest rates or uh, three-month LIBOR rates, uh, whatever tenor you want to look at, uh, is certainly showing a little of that uh, confidence for tighter European uh, policy as well. Here's the three-month Eurobor rate in the purple. You can see that that has hit a new uh, record negative low, now down below negative uh, 31 basis points. That's pr uh, pretty extreme. Uh, and looking at uh, the balance sheet, you can see where their objectives are if they go continuously through September of 2017. Um, we are definitely going, we have a lot more room to run if they decide to do so. But once again, if we're talking about the value uh, that this confers and what it can do uh, to lift the euro, here is the yield spread between the euro and the USD, three-month yield spread. And it did contribute a considerable decline through much of that, uh, that period. I, uh, well, if we wanted to adjust it up to make it more uh, like for like, uh, we'd have to drop this probably down to something like 0 0.75. You can see this, this uh, measures up very nicely. But starting in late 2015, when the Fed actually hiked rates, and uh, through the subsequent uh, uh, couple of years, or year and a half, um, we saw a continued drop in favor of the U.S. dollar, and yet the euro USD didn't really move. Now that's remarkable, and it suggests that if the euro rates start to level off, the euro bore rates, and expectations of stimulus start to cool, all right, the ever burgeoning ECB balance sheet, then it could in turn supply a euro a rally. Now it it seems far fetched because we've been dealing with the euro as a bearish dovish currency for so long. It's epic tumble from uh, back here in May of 2014 when they started to attach monetary policy to exchange rate levels 114. Then they threatened adopting open ended QE programs, which they did uh, back in early 2015. And then we had this remarkable decline throughout. It seems like the euro is permanently affixed to its extreme dove uh, position, but it's not. Just like the U.S. dollar and the Fed uh, and immediately after the great financial crisis and through the uh, years up until about 2011-2013 uh, was without doubt the most uh, accommodative central bank out there. But that changed. It eventually changed. The same is going to happen to the ECB. The same is going to happen to the BOJ. It's going to happen to all the central banks. All right, it's just a matter of time. But the euro at this point may be ahead of many others. Now, there are arguments to be made for the likes of the RBA and the BOC, uh, but they are not nearly as substantial uh, in terms of size and influence as the ECB. If we are coming to the uh, so-called taper, of the EC's, uh, ECB's stimulus program, even the mention of the taper in the timetable, that could have a profound impact and remarkably change the bearings of the euro and its inherent uh, response to monetary policy and data uh, going into the future. Now, there are still other headwinds that we have to take into consideration for the euro. It's not just about monetary policy. Uh, we also have to consider the fallout from Brexit for the EU and the eurozone, uh, economic growth, the problem with uh, certain members like Greece. Uh, but that said, monetary policy over the past three to five years has been one of the most prolific fundamental themes in the FX market, at many times uh, besting the influence of risk on, risk off. So with that being said, this is a piece of event risk that uh, traders should be watching very closely, and I have to say that it should be every FX trader, as this is our most liquid currency pair in the market. And if the euro starts to slowly gain traction as not a dovish currency, but rather a normalization uh, currency or even uh, a distant hawkish currency, that can dramatically change the standings of the FX majors. All right, so. 
it is not a sure thing, uh, but this is an inevitable situation. It might not be inevitable for this coming week, but it will eventually happen. And when it does, we need to be prepared to see what it actually what actually happens with the euro, what ha actually happens with uh, yields uh, in Europe and capital markets in Europe. Because this is certainly a place where I expect a lot of people to uh, come with a lot of questions saying, how does this make any sense? What changed? And uh, where are fundamentals uh, uh, breaking down for the euro? They're not breaking down, they're evolving. And this is a major evolution if it uh, takes place this coming week. All right, so keep this in mind. All right, we'll wrap this up here. Uh, we'll do our next strategy video next week. Until then, I wish you good luck trading out there.